When I think about my position on this earth, why did God place me here? What is my purpose? What should I be doing? And he goes on and on and on. But the most important thing is all in all of this is to be in Christ. To be in Christ. To know Him. To love Him. But with that, I realize there's things I must be found doing or having in Christ. And so that's what I want to talk about for a few moments this morning. For an example, I must be found walking in the truth. I must be. We find in 2 John chapter 1 in verse 4 these words. I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. I like that. As we have received a commandment from the Father. And so you see, to be in Christ means that I must be found walking by commandment of God in the truth. I must be found watching and not sleeping. This is found in Mark 13. I want you to open your Bibles there because I want, there's something I want us to see this morning in Mark 13. I want you to listen very closely as we read here. It won't take you but just a second to go there. In the 13th chapter of Mark, I want you to notice with me verses 34 through 36. Mark 13. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. And so Jesus says to his disciples, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Wow. Now Jesus isn't talking about, even though he's using a physical to relate to a spiritual lesson here, he's not talking about physically sleeping. He's talking about spiritually sleeping. When I was coming back from Corinth, Mississippi, Thursday, I noted a car in front of me. And that car was weaving back and forth. And I thought to myself, only two things could be wrong here. And then I thought, no, it's maybe the third thing. The first thing I thought of, is this person drunk? Then I thought, well, I wonder if the person is on a cell phone. Or is that person sleeping? But eventually, the individual straightened up and was gone out of sight. But you see, I must be found in Christ, not sleeping, but watching. I don't know when God's going to bring this world to an end, but I sure want to be ready, don't you? I want to be ready. And I happily anticipate heaven. I really do. I'm looking forward to peace, a peace that I've never seen. I'm looking forward to never, ever having to go to another hospital or to watch a loved one die or to see people in pain in various ways. I surely am watching because I don't know when he's coming back. But you see, if we are not watching, that means we're sleeping. It means that we're probably just as Jesus mentioned in Revelation 3 
to the church at Laodicea were just lukewarm. We're not hot, we're not cold, but just lukewarm. That confuses more people than we'll ever realize. But also, as I think about where I must be found in Christ, I think about Peter's statement, how that I must be found in peace. Peace is a wonderful word, isn't it? Peace. Jesus said, I give you peace. And I do find peace in Jesus. Oh, do I find that peace there. I'm so grateful to God that I'm a Christian. I have a peace, as Paul talked about, that the world doesn't understand. A peace that passes all understanding. I know the world doesn't understand that. But this is not the kind of peace that I'm referring to. I must be found in peace, not with peace. Now listen to Peter's statement in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. You could also look at verses 5, 6, and 7. But in 14 he says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. Now listen to him. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace. My, my. When I was in the army last Christmas that I spent there, and I use that word Christmas, not that I respect it or hold it up, but that's what we call it, December the 25th, maybe I should say. And there was an, an absolute carnage on that post. I had been on a trip and came back, and the base was basically torn apart. Some guys got drunk and a riot took place. I couldn't even find my barrack because it was, there was no light. But I do remember the UP or the unit police saying, more than anything, we need peace. He said, you'll have to find your way to your barrack because everyone is commanded to not move at this time. And so I stayed at the gate of the post for several hours and then I decided, well, I'm going to go on. I'm going to find my post, my barrack. And when I got there, it was in total turmoil. I was commanded and demanded to stay there with the charger quarters and not go any further. And then again, I heard the CQ say, my, we need peace. Now let me say this. We are the peacemakers, brethren. That's true. When I got up to my barrack, I was totally stunned how that it was ripped apart. I was shocked. I did not think for a moment that man who's supposed to love man, here we are, fellow soldiers, and we destroyed everything that we had among ourselves, and many were put in hospitals. A couple even died, maybe three, the best I can remember. And I remember two days later meeting on the parade field the commander of all the U.S. forces in Europe saying, what's wrong with you guys? You should be found in peace. That reminds me today sometimes of the church. The great commander, our creator, our savior, tells us to be found in peace. That's what we find here. And if we're not found in peace, then we're not pleasing God. Now listen to him. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace. Found of who? Him. I don't want God to see me as a troublemaker. 
Oh, no, 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 no. I don't, I'm not talking about standing for truth. I don't care what cost, I'll stand for the truth. But I'm talking about my life. I'm talking about the way I conduct myself and the way I treat people. He says that we were to be found in Him, in peace, without spot, in blameless. I wonder if that sinks very deep into our hearts. This is the way I'm to be found. And so are you. And he says without spot and, without, and, and blameless. That means then that I must be found in Christ well prepared. Preparation is very important. In anything we do, in everything we do. The Bible tells me to prepare to meet thy God. Yes, there's preparation to be made, Jimmy. I want you to listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 25. And if you want to, you can turn there because we're going to read those first 13 verses. Because we're going to find that Jesus tells us that we are to be well prepared. I know you already know the text and context. It's to the ten virgins. I know that you already know that five are wise and five are unwise. But I want to remind you again, again how Jesus put it. Maybe it's been a while since you've read it, but listen to him. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight uh, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then shall, excuse me, then all those virgins arose. Now, all ten arose and trimmed their lamps. All ten of them did that. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your lamp oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. That means then I must be well prepared for the coming of Jesus. I am to be found well prepared. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 and following, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven... Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? What's the answer going to be? Jesus said, and I will say unto them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, or work to you that work iniquity, I do not know you. Being a Christian is one thing, but a Christian is a true Christian I'm talking about. They're Christ-like. Sure, they're going to be in Christ. And they're going to be walking in the truth. And they're not going to be sleeping, but they're going to be watching. They're not going to be wrapped up in themselves in this world. They're going to do their best to be found without spot. And they're surely not going to be blameless. They're going to do everything they can to be as they're commanded to be. And that is, they're going to be well prepared. 
to meet God. And so then that must also remind us how that we must be found in Christ and that is living a life that will bring honor and glory to Him. You see, you and I, and of course I know Paul is right when he says you give honor to whom honor is due. But what about praise? What about honor and glory? Are you even listening? It goes to God. That's who it belongs to. We're here today to worship Him and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is God that receives the glory and the praise and the honor. But not only that, I should be living that kind of life. You know, you've heard people say, I got nothing out of that sermon. Let me tell you why you got nothing out of it. You put nothing in it. Some people could care less. And that's sad. For them, it's sad. But yet still Jesus tells us and warns us about the five why or for the five foolish and, and praises, of course, in his own way, the five wise. Yes. Listen to Peter again. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Mm. Again, that means that I must be living a life that will give this honor, praise, and glory at His appearing. Because if I'm not living it now, I'm sure not going to give it on the day of judgment. Uh-uh. I heard someone say this. And that's been too awful long ago. Well, you know, I know God, and God, God's not going to, you know, you preachers, you just, all you want to do is make us feel bad. Are you crazy? And that's what I said to the person. Are you crazy? When you open the scripture and read what God says through inspiration, you're going to blame the preacher for that? It's not the preacher, it's you. Your heart is wrong. Your heart's not right because you're not living right and you want to make yourself feel justified by blaming the speaker. You see, I want to be found with my name written in the Lamb's book of life. Do you realize that not everyone in the church of Christ have their names written in the Lamb's book of life? It was there once, but it's not there now. Why? Because they're not living the way God would have them to. Church means virtually nothing to them. But I want you to listen to Revelation, John, as we read in Revelation 20 and 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Huh. God can take my name out of that book of life. And God will take it out if I'm not found in Christ the way the scriptures teach me. That means also that I must be loving God with all of my being. Jesus made it so clear in Matthew 22, verse 37. When he was talking to the lawgiver or the lawyer, he said unto him, which is the, the, the question was, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And so Jesus answered that question, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Yeah. But if you were to go down two more verses, you'll find the second command. That you love your neighbor as you love yourself. No wonder I'm to be found in peace. And you know, a lot of people today, brethren, do not even love themselves. They could care less. But we are to love our neighbors. We love ourselves. I can't change that, nor can you. 
but I can live and be found in Christ by doing this, to love God with all of my being. I'm also to live, be found in Christ soberly, thinking clearly. Peter said, to be sober and be vigilant because your adversary walketh about seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. It's unfortunate, but there are those who are already devoured by Satan and they don't even know it. They don't even know it. They don't even realize it. He's guided them. It's not even a thought. I'll ask you, as I've asked so many times from this pulpit, how often do you pray? How often do you really pray? And when you do pray to God, is it just for you and your, maybe your family? How often do you pray? So important. Because I find in 1 Thessalonians 5, in verse 7, that I'm to be praying without ceasing. And I will tell you this much. When you begin to look around and you see joyful people in the church, you'll, you'll realize something about them. They're happy. And because they understand this, he says in verse 16, rejoice evermore. You see, people who pray to God trust God. They believe in Him. They know their reliance is upon Him. They need Him every moment of their day. Yeah. And I'm to be found in Christ praying always with this prayerful spirit, this prayerful attitude. He tells them in verses 18 and that they're to be giving thanks in everything. You know, people today don't even give God thanks for the food they have. Think nothing about it. We don't thank God in the mornings when we get up that we've been blessed with another day. It's just we take it for granted. I'm not being trying to be facetious or cruel. But we take so much for granted, it's unbelievable. Also, I realize that as I'm going to be found in Christ, and I must be found committing my way and my trust to Him. As I studied in Bible class this morning, from Psalm 118 and verse 8, please don't misunderstand me when I say this. I'm just using what Scripture teaches. It's better to put your trust in God rather than man. Man will hurt you. All the time they're saying, I love you. Man will betray you even though they'll say, I won't ever do that. You see, God knows better. And so I must be found committing myself to God and trusting Him. In Psalm 37, 5, as I said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. I have no concerns or no worries when it comes to God. Whatever happens to this nation will be our faults. Whatever happens to this congregation will be our faults. Whatever happens in our families to the greatest of all will be our faults. Because you see, we're going to reap what we sow, brethren. I want to be found trusting God. Because he'll bring it all to pass. There was a lot of talk this past week as I was in a meeting about the issues of our nation and world. A lot of talk. I wasn't even in on the conversations. I just heard the people. People are so concerned and scared and fearful. Fearful. 
And then the guy asked me, what are your thoughts? And I told him, and he laughed at me. My thought is this. My trust is in God, not man. I will trust him. Because the Bible teaches that he will never leave me, nor will he ever forsake me, the Hebrew writer says. And folks, I don't say this self-righteously, but I say it righteously. If I stand all alone, so be it. God will not betray me. Man will. God will not hurt me. Man will. God will not lie to me. Man will in a heartbeat. God will not use me or abuse me. Man will. Oh, but Jimmy, you're painting such a bleak picture on man. Then I ask you to do one thing. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Place your focus on God. Be found in Christ. Walking in truth. Not sleeping, but watching. Be found in peace and be found blameless. Be found well prepared. All of this is in Christ. Be found living a life that would be giving honor and glory and praise to God. That requires me to live truthfully and honestly and respectfully. Be found loving God with all of your being. Be found thinking clearly, spiritually speaking. Where I was doing the meeting, there were three men there that are police officers. One a city police, two city police and one state trooper. And they said one of their biggest problems today is people who are on drugs, driving impaired. The second problem is the cell phones, people having wrecks, texting. It's just unbelievable. They're not thinking clearly. Folks, we have people in the church who are drunk. Unfortunately, spiritually speaking, they're drunk. They're not thinking soberly or clearly. We need to wake up. That's why we need to put our trust in God. But as I close, let me say this. The one thing that you must do, that I must do, to be found in Christ is recorded in the book of Ephesians. You know where it's at. So if you would, turn to Ephesians chapter 6 as we end this. I want you to look at yourself as I look at myself. I want to begin with verse 10. And we'll go through verse 18. Listen carefully to what Paul says to the church, how they must be found in Christ. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able or may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You see, Paul says you're in a spiritual warfare. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Whoa. You see, the bottom line is this. This is the way I must be found and you must be found in Christ. But first of all, we must be in Christ in order to do that. I'm also told, as Paul would write to the church at Thess I mean, Corinth, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, that I am to be steadfast and so are you. I am to be unmovable and so are you. I am to always be abounding in the work of the Lord, so are you. Yeah, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That is how we are to be found in Christ. The latter part of that verse is what scares me. Lest it all be in vain. <laughs> I can call myself a Christian all day long. But that doesn't make me a Christian. I can preach and teach all day long and cry from the rooftops, I love God and not love Him. Words are one thing, but brethren, actions are another. And I'm so happy that Jesus taught me through word a long time ago when I became a Christian because if I hadn't found that out, I probably wouldn't even be in the church today. And he was right. You will know a tree by its fruit. God help us all to be found in Christ the way the scriptures teach us and none less. If you're not a Christian, you can become one today. In the Bible class this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 the last verse, today is the day. Now is the time. This is the time of salvation. You can become a Christian by obeying the gospel through your hearing and believing and repenting of your sins and confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and being baptized for the mission of your sins. When you do that, He'll add you to His church. What a wonderful thing. For those of us that are members of the Church of Christ, do we really love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Are we really putting the kingdom first? Are we really steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord? My, my. We need to do some soul searching. You may say no today, and you may say no tomorrow. You may, whatever, it's your choice. But you know, there's one thing you can do. If you're really not connected as you need to be spiritually speaking, you can become reconnected. That's called reconciliation. And repent and come back to your first love. 